I'd also, I'd also like to remind you that when we had bad times here, the club stood by me, all my staff stood by me, the players stood by me. Your job now is to stand by our new manager. And United fans uh, are looking at the league table and seeing we finished on 66 points uh, last season. Chelsea finished on 66 points. We were both 33 points behind Liverpool. What is, what is my, club my club doing, doing to close, close that, that gap? gap? It's been seven years since Sir Alex Ferguson gave that farewell speech at Old Trafford. In that time, Man City have won the league, Chelsea have won the league and Liverpool have won the league. Man United have had four different managers and spent over a billion pounds on new signings. And what do we have to show for it? Nothing, because the one constant that we've had throughout that whole time has been the Glazers. And in this video, I really want to fully expose the Glazers' strategy at Manchester United for what it is. A strategy of investing what is necessary to protect the value of the brand of United to get Champions League football, but a strategy which takes that investment away once Champions League football is achieved. Man United was once a club with Premier League winning ambitions every season, but now our only ambition is to finish in the top four to fit this Glazers strategy. It hurts to say, but it's the truth. And in this video, I want to fully expose the Glazers for that. So please make sure you share this video, drop a like on it, subscribe, do what you want. Just get the word out there. And the first thing to really understand about all of this is context. Because for outsiders looking in, United have spent a billion pounds in the last seven years. What the hell am I complaining about? But not one penny of that has been the Glazers' money. They've leveraged their debt onto the club. We've been paying their debt. And any money they've spent has been United's. And if you look at the three periods here, we've got one period looking at the eight seasons pre-Glazers. And United were the big spenders. It was only Chelsea coming in with Abramovich who changed that landscape. But we were big achievers at that point and we were big spenders. Then look at the eight years, seven, eight years of the Glazers under Fergie. And you realise that he should not have had the amount of success that he did. His sheer brilliance covered up for the failings in investment. And the cracks never really started to appear under Fergie. But the storm was brewing. And the storm came next in those seasons post Fergie. Because United, while we spent all that money, nearly a billion pounds, this period has been dominated by City. Chelsea still being Chelsea. Liverpool started buying smartly. United spending was done irresponsibly by people unfit for the job. And while it may be hard to see patterns in this, it's easier when you break it down season by season. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. And a big shout out to James for helping with the research on this video because there was a lot of research and a lot of time went into it. But when you look at it season by season, the pattern at United is obvious. Hiring a new manager, backing him, getting back into the Champions League, then pulling back investment, then the manager going under, then the manager getting sacked, and the cycle is repeated. And you can go the whole way back to David Moyes. And let's start with that 2013-2014 season under Moyes. Now, at that point, we were the champions, so investment wasn't massively necessary for United. And you could see that in the summer. He inherited the champions, and the only player he signed was Marouan Fellaini because we spent the summer chasing unattainable targets. That was a waste of a summer. And if you compare our spending to the rivals around us, you can see that we fell off. We were clearly going to get outdone by our rivals because we were outspent by our rivals. And David Moyes was out of his depth. The football was horrible. Nothing really to like about the season other than maybe Adnan Yanazai's breakthrough. Turgid football on and off the pitch. Turgid football. Turgid feeling about Moyes being our manager. And he was rightly sacked after that loss at Goodison Park to Everton. And we finished seventh in the Premier League. So United didn't have Champions League football the following season. And as this pattern shows, that's when the real investment comes in. Now, Louis van Gaal in his first season, 2014-15, he went big in the summer transfer window. He was back. Look at the players that he signed. Angel Di Maria, Luke Shaw, Ander Herrera, Marcus Rojo, Daley Blind and Falcao came in. We got rid of plenty too, but United were big spenders. Look at us compared to our rivals. Without the Champions League football, we were the big spenders, outspending everybody. Now, Van Hal's first season, the football was boring for a lot of people, but it worked. We had a great record in those 
big games against the top six teams, and it was enough to earn us a fourth place finish. We couldn't put away those lesser teams, but we were back in the Champions League the following season. So what happened the following summer? Now, United did spend quite big as well this summer. Look at the signings that we made. We signed Martial, we got Schneidlin and Schweinsteiger, Memphis Depay came in and Damien came in too. But look at the players that left. Di Maria, Hernandez, Johnny Evans, Van Persie, Nani, Raphael. United spent a lot, but United got rid of a hell of a lot. And questionably as well, Raphael being a big standout there. Was it too early for... Anyway, different video altogether. But United spent big and sold big. And compared to our rivals, it was only actually City that outspent us. Now in Van Hal's second season, United fans started to get bored of the style of play of Louis Van Hal. That football, that controlling football with not really much penetration, it wasn't what Old Trafford was used to. United fans were jarred against that style of football. And winning the FA Cup wasn't enough for Louis Van Hal to save his job. And United finished that season fifth in the Premier League. So Van Hal had failed the Glazers' business model of finishing in the top four. What was next? We all know what was next. Jose Mourinho was next, and as the pattern shows, without Champions League football, United go big. And in Mourinho's first summer, United went very big. We got Paul Pogba, a world record transfer at the time. We got Mkhitaryan, we got Bay, we got Ibrahimovic. Schneidlin and Memphis Depay both moved on immediately. United had a big summer. After all, we didn't achieve Champions League football the previous season. So as the pattern and the model shows, we need to spend big. Now in that first season, I would say it's probably one of the best seasons we've had post-Fergie. Won the League Cup, won the Europa League, Ibrahimovic delivered, Mkhitaryan didn't. But United won two trophies. But we finished sixth, but it didn't matter because we won the Europa League. United and Mourinho had achieved Champions League football for the following season. So the Glazers' model, it had been a success. We were back in that top four Happy, well not in the top four, sorry, we were back in the Champions League. Happy days. Now, it was that summer actually where you can see the only real break in the pattern because Jose Mourinho was backed again. We signed Lukaku, Matic, Lindelof and Sanchez. Mkhitaryan was moved on, but the investment actually continued. And that was the only real break to United's pattern in the Premier League as well because we went from finishing sixth to finishing second, our highest finish in the Premier League post Fergie. Mourinho was that close. Oh, I'd say he's that close. He was way off Man City. If you look at the table, what were 19 points behind Man City? But Mourinho had achieved a second place finish. And he had built on that first season of the League Cup and the Europa League. He got to second. There's only one place he can go now. And that's winning the Premier League. And here is where the problems start. Because Mourinho, remember, back in January 2018, was given a new contract. United had backed Mourinho enough to give him a new deal. So surely we were going to back him in the summer? No, we did a complete U-turn. We know what happened that summer with a miserable Mourinho out on the pre-season tour. And then if you look at what happened in the summer as well, the only players we signed were Fred and Diogo Dalot and Lee Grant, if you want to count that as well. And to say Mourinho wasn't back that summer is an understatement. Look at the spending compared to our rivals. United were the 10th biggest spenders in the Premier League. Bournemouth and Brighton spent more than us. So it was inevitable what was going to happen with Mourinho. United did not back Mourinho because he had achieved Champions League football the previous year. Therefore, major investment wasn't needed to achieve Champions League football this year. Mourinho wanted to go and win the Premier League. United didn't give a fuck about that. So he didn't get the investment. And we all know what happened in that third season. Everything began to unravel. The Mourinho problems that we feared came true because he had lost respect for the club. He clearly saw a divide between what the club wanted and what he wanted. And therefore, Mourinho had already checked out and Mourinho was sacked. And this is where the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer story begins. And when Ole came in, that renaissance under Ole for that first couple of months was absolutely sensational. Then he was given the job on a full-time contract. And then we all collapsed towards the end of the season. But there was enough positive notes there to see what was coming next. And United finished sixth. So we didn't have Champions League football next year. Now, what does that tell us? It tells us that the following summer, United are going to spend big. And United backed Solskjaer. The signings we made there, Harry Maguire, 
We signed Wan Bissaka. We got Dan James. Lukaku was shifted on. United were the big spenders in the Premier League again. United had improved the squad. United had backed Solskjaer because the club wanted him to get back into the top four to fit the Glazers' business model. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer achieved that. For me, last season was the best season of football to actually watch every game since Fergie. Bruno Fernandes' arrival in January transformed the second half of the season, transformed the feeling of the team and the ambition of the team. Fernandes came in because he wanted to win everything, not simply to get into the top four. But United achieved that. We got third. Somehow, we got third. Solskjaer had achieved that top four finish that the Glazers wanted. But now, Solskjaer is falling foul to the same treatment that Van Gaal got, that Mourinho got. We're one of only three Premier League clubs, I believe, to have not made a signing this summer. A summer where United need to build on the success of last season, because finishing third isn't a success for United. It's a stepping stone towards the ultimate success of winning the Premier League. That's what Solskjaer wants. That's not what the Glazers want. And that business model was successful last summer. So they're not going to change it this summer. We are just not a club whose ambition it is to win the Premier League anymore. We are a club whose ambition it is to stay in the top four, to maintain the Champions League football. And when we don't have that Champions League football, to spend to get that Champions League football back. That is the model. And it's at this point that I really want to apologise to Wayne Rooney for what he did back in 2010. We heard, of course, from uh, Sir Alex Ferguson, the manager at Manchester United, uh, yesterday saying he was bemused uh, by uh, why Wayne Rooney would want to leave a club like this. And, of course, Wayne Rooney's come forward today uh, to give us some of the reasons as he sees it. I know that this afternoon uh, uh, down in Cheshire, he spent a couple of hours with uh, Paul Stretford, uh, his agent. Uh, we saw him leave uh, the, the premises where his agent is based. Uh, this afternoon and then a few hours later we heard uh, his statement and it includes uh, this line in it, Jeremy. Uh, I, uh, that's Wayne Rooney, met with David Gill, that's the chief executive of Manchester United last week and he did not give me any of the assurances I was seeking about the future squad. I then told him that I would not be signing a new contract. Rooney saw what had happened with United not replacing Ronaldo and he saw what was happening to the club. So Rooney, you were right. I was wrong to completely back Fergie and turn against you. You saw from the inside what was happening. And it's so painful to see, so painful to say, but it's just not United anymore. United are not a club that has those ambitions to win the Premier League anymore because it doesn't fit the strategy of the Glazers at Manchester United. And as I've shown in this video, the patterns that exist over the last seven, eight years, over four managers, the patterns and the evidence are there to prove that is the case. Now, can it change? Of course it can change. United need to have continued investment season on season to keep improving the squad, to keep bettering ourselves, to get towards that Premier League title that all the fans want to have, but the club seemingly do not. And this summer so far has shown that is the case. Now, it could all change. We could sign Jadon Sancho. We could sign other players. We could have a late surge. But it doesn't take away from any facts in this video. Everything in this video still stands true, regardless of what United do in the last few weeks of this transfer window. And I hope we switch it up. I hope it changes. And this summer, we actually back Solskjaer, even though he's got Champions League football, to get better and improve and improve on that third place finish. That's what we all want. That's not what's happened so far. And history tells us that isn't going to happen. United as a football club has been turned into a top four cash cow by the Glazers who simply want to maximise their profit for when they sell. And they're only focused on the dividends that they get every single year. We really are no longer a team with ambitions to win the Premier League. And as a final point, I want to put across the question that my good friend Aditya did in his latest video over on his channel about the Glazers. The truth doesn't care about our needs or wants. It doesn't care about our governments, our ideologies, our religions. It will lie in wait for all time. Where I once would fear the cost of truth, now I only ask, what is the cost of lies?